The following podcast is based on the Cambridge A-Level History Curriculum. Greetings podcast listeners. In today's episode of my series about Mussolini's Italy from 1919 to 1945, I'll be discussing some of the aims of his foreign policy. Firstly, one of the aims was that Mussolini wanted to obtain the lands promised in the 1915 Treaty of London. Secondly, he wanted to expand Italian influence into the Adriatic Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Thirdly, he aimed at spreading fascist ideology. Fourthly, a key goal of Mussolini's was to revive the glory of the Roman Empire and demonstrate the national unity and strength of Italy. Fifth, he wanted to achieve a superior position in European politics, where Italy was seen as an equal to Britain and France. And finally, his foreign policy aimed at increasing and maintaining his popularity in order to sustain his rule. In this episode, we will begin to look into fascist Italy's expansionist policies. Let's start with the Corfu Crisis of 1923. Following the First World War, Italy had not been given as much land as it was supposed to be given by the Allies, and as a result, they began to make trouble. In August 1923, Italian investigators were sent by the League of Nations to investigate a border dispute between Greece and Albania. On August 27, 1923, Enrico Tellini, an Italian general, Major Luigi Corti, Lieutenant Mario Bonaccini, Albanian interpreter Thanas Gazziri, and the chauffeur Remigio Fanetti were killed by unknown assailants on Greek territory. On the 29th of August, Italy sent an ultimatum to Greece, with the main demands being an apology, 50 million lire, and an investigation assisted by ambassadors of the Italian military. This was rejected by Greece. As a result, the Italian leader, Benito Mussolini, blamed Greece and sent between 5,000 and 10,000 troops to invade and occupy the island of Corfu. Although the League condemned Italy as the aggressor, Mussolini refused to listen. He went to the Conference of Ambassadors and asked them to resolve the Corfu crisis, and Britain and France gave in to this demand of Mussolini's to resolve the issue outside of the League. Ultimately, the Greeks were forced to give in, and they apologised to Italy and paid direct compensation to them, and gave in to all of Mussolini's other demands. On to the fume incident of 1923-1924. In April 1915, the Treaty of London was signed on the condition that Italy would receive territory for participating in the war on the side of Britain and France. Fume was not included as a territory, but Italy was sure that they would receive it, due to the high proportion of Italians living there. On September 12, 1919, Gabriele D'Annunzio gathered a group of 2,000 nationalist men and forced the withdrawal of Allied forces from Fume. They occupied it, and Annunzio proclaimed himself the commandant of the Regenza Italia del Carnaro, in what he proclaimed to be the independent state of Fiume. Italy believed that Fiume should belong to them, claiming that the better part of the population was Italian. On November 12, 1920, the Italian government concluded the Treaty of Rapallo with Yugoslavia and decided to remove D'Annunzio from the established free state of Fiume. The state survived only one de facto year and four de jure years before a fascist movement forced the president, Zanella, to resign. On 17th of September 1923, an Italian general, Giardino, was sent by Italian Prime Minister Benito Mussolini to restore public order. Meanwhile, negotiations started between Italy and the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes to dissolve the free state fume. On January 27th 1924, the Treaty of Rome concluded that fume would be annexed, to become an Italian province. So, with what we've discussed, when we consider the Corfu and Fume incidents as evidence, was Mussolini successful in achieving his foreign policy aims? Let's begin with the first aim, receiving the lands promised under the Treaty of London. Although Corfu was not included in the Treaty of London, Mussolini wished to obtain colonies and to expand the Italian Empire. However, he did not achieve his expansionist aims, as he was not able to continue the occupation of Corfu. With regards to the Treaty of London, although Italy had claimed Fume, they were not specifically promised it. In the end, they were able to annex Fume under the Treaty of Rome, signed with Yugoslavia. So yes, this factor did contribute to the success of his foreign policy. On to the second aim, expanding Italian influence into the Adriatic Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Well, Mussolini tried to expand Italian influence into Corfu, but in the end, they withdrew following the resolution of the Conference of Ambassadors, and they were given reparations instead. Regarding Fume, again, it was a success because Italy officially took control of Fume in 1924. 
Now, did Mussolini successfully spread fascism in the Corfu incident? No, because he was only given compensation from the Greeks. How about Fume? In this case, yes, of course he did. He was able to challenge Britain and France for the sake of restoring Italian power and glory by annexing Fume. Next, the fourth aim. Did Mussolini revive the glory of the Roman Empire? Well, he demonstrated national unity when he sent Italian forces following Tallini's murder, and the strength when they successfully occupied the island. However, in the long term, this aim was not a success. Although he had managed to stand up to the League of Nations, he was forced to give up Corfu and accept Greek reparations. Regarding Fume, Mussolini initially refused to comply with the government in exile in the Free State, but once he insisted the annexation and signed the Pact of Rome, he was able to further expand Italian influence. He was one small step further to reviving the Roman Empire. Moving to the fifth aim of achieving a more important position in European politics, was he successful when looking at Corfu? I think, yes, because he was able to bully a smaller nation, Greece in this case, to comply with his demands. This made Italy closer to being on the scale of the power that Britain and France had. Moreover, he was successful to a large extent in Fume, as he took a huge risk trying to take over Fume, and it proved to be successful. Finally, was Mussolini able to increase and maintain his popularity in order to sustain his rule? With regards to Corfu, I would say, yes, he was able to improve his reputation in Italy because he was able to successfully humiliate and condemn the Greeks and the League of Nations. Furthermore, he was able to achieve the demands of the Italian people and obtain fume thus improving his image. Thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast. In the next episode, I'll be speaking about Mussolini's diplomacy from 1923 to 1934. Please subscribe to be notified when the next episode releases. You can also use the links in the description to leave feedback or send me a DM on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and bye for now.